Welcome back to Snacks and Facts, Snack-Sized History, and this thing that I'm gonna eat. Today's snack is, well, I don't know. See, I googled Azerbaijani snacks and this video by Bear Club popped up and any other site I looked at the Azerbaijani snacks does not mention this dish and some of the other food listed just looks mouthwateringly good. But because I'm a bit basic in the kitchen, I mean, you are, that's the truth. I wanted to make an easy snack, okay? So this is called gata chore, which I think just means yogurt and bread. The lady in the video says it tastes like mac and cheese. And this is where you wonder whether this is an actual traditional Azerbaijani snack or if it's this nice person just grew up on weird you know? Anyway, so you take bread, tear it into breadcrumbs, mix it in the yogurt, and then add salt. And it's meant to taste just like mac and cheese. I feel like crying. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a dish that suits your personality. <laughs> Just white and bland. <laughs> Some people are like eating wet bread consistency. <laughs> Don't knock it till you try it. Yeah, here we go. Say something, I'm giving up on. Oh, she has a point. <laughs> no, the aftertaste isn't good. They give me a spoonful. I'm curious now. You want a spoon? It's like eating a wet sock. <laughs> Today in history, we had events that created a badass lady pirate, killed a king, and created a pioneer. Classy ladies first. You may have heard of Jeanne de Clisson before, most recently being used as an example in a Twitter argument asking folks to name a badder bitch than Taylor Swift. And Jeanne de Clisson was delivered again to the masses. Jeanne de Clisson is a 14th century dame. Dame! Don't do that. Sorry. From France, if you couldn't tell from my excellent pronunciation. In 1330, Jeanne met her main squeeze, Olivier de Clisson IV, and they had five children together, including Olivier's successor, Olivier the Butcher. Oh. Anyway, if you're keeping track of the time and location, then you know that the Clissons are about to get caught up in the beginning of the Breton War of Succession, which was a key part in the little event known as the Hundred Years War. War. John III, the Duke of Brittany, died in 1341 without securing an heir. This then caused the two major houses, Blois and Montfort, to war for the title. Glisson, of course, sides with the French and was a military commander during a few battles with the English before he was captured by them. Where everyone got suspicious was when Olivier was the only one released after a small ransom was given. The French king suspected that Olivier lost on purpose in a treasonous deal with England. So when Olivier was later at a tournament with some other cool lords, he was captured by his fellow country men, jailed in Paris, and then on the 2nd of August 1343, despite a lack of evidence of his guilt, he was beheaded and his corpse was put on display. And as the great Ben Folds once said, the bitch went nuts. Jeanne took her two sons to see their dad's head on display and then swore revenge on the French king and Charles de Blois. She sold her lands and used that money to build an army to attack French forces in Brittany. Well, not just attack, massacre. This is where it all gets really blurry. What is certain is that Jeanne was definitely condemned as a traitor in 1343. This is when she probably tried to escape from France with her two sons. There are records that in 1345, King Edward gave her an income and in 1347, she was declared an English ally. With this money, it is believed that she obtained three warships painted black with red sails. Her fave ship was called My Revenge. Can you imagine it being some sailor on the deck of your ship in the foggy English Channel and suddenly BOOM this black and red beast just appears out of the fog and starts raining down in fury. Jeanne's pirate life as the lioness of Brittany either continued for 13 years or five months depending on who you believe. Old lady pirate Jeanne then settled down with another fella in Brittany and she died quietly in 1359. What a cool lady. I wouldn't want her to be my mom. I'm too sensitive for witnessing uh, headless dads, but I would watch a movie about her. There is a link to a cool children's book version of her life below if you want to inspire your kids to be tough and um, commit treason, I don't know. I think you should have another bite of your snack. You know how people get on YouTube if you waste food? Oh, the sound is weird. Like mother's porridge. <laughs> I'm eating this traditional snack today because today is Azerbaijan Cinema Day. The Azerbaijan film industry has existed since 1898 after the Lumiere Brothers cinematograph apparatus. It's fine. Travel to the country's city capital of Baku. One film in the kingdom of oil and millions was considered the country's first art film in 1916, but sadly the film vanished during the Bolshevik occupation and then the negatives were lost from the Russian archive in the 1970s. Ooh. And Burnt by the Sun, written by a Russian Azerbaijani screenwriter, won the best foreign language film in 1994. You can find links to videos and trailers below. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Snacks and Facts. This week we are putting up a video every day to celebrate and then you can expect 
a video every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific time. Today would have been the dazzling Doris Kenner Jackson, aka Doris Coley, of the Shirelles' birthday. The Shirelles have been credited as pioneers as Doris was a member of the first all-female music group to get a number one hit record with the song Will You Love Me Tomorrow? You know that one, don't you? Carol King and the beautiful, what's it? Will you still love me? And lastly, you've heard of William the Conqueror, surely, but have you heard of his son, Robert Baratheon? I'm just kidding. William II of England was an 11th century king that was killed in a hunting accident. William II has been suggested to have inspired Cersei's plan for Rob Baratheon's death. He was struck in the gut by a boar instead. Oh, spoilers. Uh, but in real life, William, who was much disliked and mean to priests, was out hunting with his friends when his bestie, Walter Tyrell, eh, Tyrell, hey. Oh, I don't watch Game of Thrones. What? Shot at a stag, missed, and hit the king in the chest. And after the king was shot, everyone in his hunting party and everyone that the king cared for did just what you would hope your loved ones do when you're in trouble. They just left him there. Dead. His bestie fled back to France and his bro ran back to the treasury to seize it and then have himself declared King Henry the First. What can we learn from this? Don't be mean to people. Don't hunt animals. Don't have friends. I don't think that's a problem for you. <laughs> cool. Sorry. So how was your day? <laughs>